Good evening and welcome to you all to this service of evening prayer on Tuesday the 26th of January. Today we have been commemorating Timothy and Titus who were companions of St Paul and travelled with him on his many journeys. Today we reach another milestone of course that we've heard on the news today of having uh, over 100,000 deaths in this country from coronavirus. A grim milestone to be marking, I know. But we pray for each and every one of those families this evening who've been affected by this dreadful disease. And we pray that it would soon come to an end. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your glory is proclaimed in all the world. Lest in you, sovereign God, our light and our salvation, to you be glory and praise for ever. You gave your Christ as a light to the nations, and through the anointing of the Spirit, who established us as a royal priesthood, as you call us into your marvellous light. May our lives bear witness to your truth, and our lips never cease to proclaim your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. The psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 145. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. I will exalt you, O God, my King, and bless your name for ever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name for ever and ever. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. His greatness is beyond all searching out. One generation shall praise your works to another and declare your mighty acts. They shall speak of the majesty of your glory, and I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. They shall speak of the might of your marvellous acts, and I will also tell of your greatness. They shall pour forth the story of your abundant kindness, and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, long-suffering and of great goodness. The Lord is loving to everyone and his mercy is over all his creatures. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your mighty power to make known to all peoples your mighty acts and the glorious splendour of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all the ages. The Lord is sure in all his words and faithful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and fill all things living with plenty. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over those who love him, but all the wicked shall he destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and let all flesh bless his holy name for ever and ever. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. King of the universe, you show the bright glory of your reign in acts of mercy and enduring love. Raise the spirits of the downcast and restore those who have fallen away, that we may sing forever of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 13, verses 2 to the end. 
Now Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver and in gold. He journeyed on by stages from the Negev as far as Bethel, to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai, to the place where he had made an altar at the, at the first, and there Abram called on the name of the Lord. Now Lot, who went with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents, so that the land could not support both of them living together. For their possessions were so great that they could not live together, and there was strife between the herders of Abram's livestock and the herders of Lot's livestock. At that time the Canaanites of the Perizzites lived in the land. Then Abraham said to Lot, Let there be no strife between you and me, and between your herders and my herders, for we are all kindred. Is not the whole land before you? Separate yourself from me. If you take the left hand, then I will go to the right. If you take the right hand, then I will go to the left. Lot looked about him and saw that the plain of the Jordan was well watered everywhere like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt in the direction of Zoar. This was before the Lord had destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot chose for himself all the plain of the Jordan, and Lot journeyed eastwards. Thus they separated from each other. Abraham's, Abram settled in the land of Canaan, while Lot settled among the cities of the plain and moved his tent as far as Sodom. Now the people of Sodom were wicked, great sinners against the Lord. The Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, Raise your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northwards and southwards and eastwards and westwards. For all the land that you see I will give to you and to your offspring forever. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth, so that if one can count the dust of the earth, your offspring also can be counted. Rise up, walk through the length and the breadth of the land, for I will give it to you. So Abba moved his tent and came and settled by the oaks of Mamre, which are at Hebron, and there he built an altar to the Lord. Here ends our first reading. Song of Praise You created all things, O God, and are worthy of our praise for ever. You are worthy, O Lord our God, to receive glory and honour and praise and power. For you have created all things, and by your will they have their being. You are worthy, O Lamb, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign with you on earth. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. You created all things, O God, and are worthy of our praise for ever. Our second reading is taken from St Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26, reading verses 17 to 35. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to meet the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says my time is near. I will keep my Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes, it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is the blood of the covenant, 
which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Here ends our second reading. The Magnificat How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news and proclaim the gospel of peace. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news and proclaim the gospel of peace. So let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for this day, for all that we have done and all that it has brought us so far. As we have commemorated Timothy and Titus, the companions of St Paul today, so we give thanks for them, for churches dedicated to their names. And as we think about their example of helping to preach the good news of the gospel of Christ, so we pray for all those across our world, for those who are missionaries, for those who preach the good news, for those who tell others about God's love. We pray for our brothers and sisters in the world who this day face persecution and opposition for the faith that they hold. We pray for those who live out that faith in fear of their lives, who have to meet in secret, that today they would be strengthened by the prayers that we make. we pray for the church throughout the world. So we pray, Lord, for its witness, the places where it is helping provide care and support, those places where it provides sanctuary, and for the ways that we are able to join together in prayer, even if we are not physically together, how we can come together to hear the words of scripture and make our prayers with each other. As we pray for our world today, we continue to pray, Lord, for your peace, for your justice, for your mercy to be felt by all. We pray for the leaders of nations and our own government at this time, as they face great challenges in the face of this global pandemic. We pray that they would work closely together that they would be able to guide and give clarity of thought, that they would show great wisdom and discernment in the words that they speak and the guidance that they try to give. We pray that we across our world would be able to follow those guidelines, to respect each other, to keep each other safe at this difficult time. In our prayer intention today, 
We pray especially for Christian healthcare workers, for chaplains and all who seek to live out the gospel in the healthcare profession. We pray for all the work that they undertake, especially praying for our hospital chaplains at this time, for the care and support that they give. And we pray, Lord, that you would care and support them, that you would give them times of refreshment and relaxation so that they can continue to give. So we pray for all our key workers, for those who go out to work and those who are working from home. We pray for those who have to juggle roles and responsibilities, for those who find that their home life is now chaotic, for those who have to deal with homeschooling as well as their own work. We pray for those who are furloughed, for those who feel frustrated about being unable to go to work, and for those who have lost their employment at this time and the anxieties and the fears that that brings. We pray for our young people as they miss being in their school routine. We pray for them as they are homeschooled but also for those who are attending school. We pray for those who have to teach across different mediums and platforms that in all their work they would be inspiring our young people, helping them to learn and giving them that thirst for knowledge. So we pray most especially today for those who do work in our health service. We pray for those who work in intensive care units, those who are on the front line and those behind the scenes. We pray for those who feel overwhelmed and worn out today who feel exhausted at all they're being asked to do. Lord, we pray that you would give them your strength, that they would know your presence with them, as they care for those in need. So we pray for our local hospitals. We pray for our hospices and for the work that they are doing in caring for people at the end of their life. We pray for those who live and work in care homes and sheltered accommodation and for those who do such valuable work out in the community, caring for people in different ways in their own homes. We pray for our GP surgeries, for our pharmacies and for our health centres and for all those places that have become vaccination hubs, for the work that they are doing in administering the vaccination and for those who receive them. And so we bring to you, Lord, those we know who suffer in body, mind or spirit. There are so many who cry out in pain and distress. And we ask, Lord, that you would hear their prayer alongside our prayers today. We pray for those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Praying for Lisa, David, Morris, Margaret, Mary, Jeff, Alan, Chris, John, Jim, Elaine, Susan, Kath and her family, Sister Catherine, Christine, Margaret, Marion, Douglas, Brian, Steve, Joanna, Ian and Helen, Martin, Helen, Jean, Jackie and Jane. Lord, we pray for them and all those that we name in our hearts and minds today and give strength to those who care for them. And so we pray for those who have died, as we've heard the shocking news of over 100,000 deaths in our own country. So we pray for each and every one of those numbers, for the family that grieves behind them, for the friends who miss their loved ones, and for all those who mourn today. We pray for those who have died recently and for those whose anniversaries occur at this time. Heavenly Father, who sent your Apostle Paul to preach the Gospel and gave him Timothy and Titus to be his companions in faith, grant that our fellowship in the Holy Spirit may bear witness to the name of Jesus, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. Believing the promises of God, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who sends us to the nations, give us the power of his Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much for joining me for this service of evening prayer. I do hope that you have a good evening ahead of you and uh, that you stay safe, take care of yourselves and you remain, as always, in my prayers. Tomorrow we have our usual services of morning and evening prayer at 9 o'clock and 5 o'clock if you're able to join me for either or both of those services. Do take care.